Welcome again. Right now we are at John chapter 1, verses 35, right through to the end of the chapter, verse 51. This is Jesus calling his disciples. Let's start. Verse 35. Again the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples. This is John the Baptist. Now, I'm going to stop here already. So, you need to understand that this is in a Jewish culture, okay? These are Jews. John the Baptist was a Jew. Jesus was a 100% Jew, okay? And so being a Jew and being a rabbi at that, it, was, it wasn't uncommon for rabbis to have disciples. Every Jewish rabbi, even to this day, have disciples, okay? So uh, for John to have his disciples and for Jesus to have his disciples, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. So John the Baptist was a Jewish rabbi and he had disciples. And a lot of you, I'm sure a lot of you are saying, well, how can you say John the Baptist was a Jewish rabbi? Rabbi simply means teacher. He was obviously a religious man, a holy man, and he was a teacher. He had disciples. You know, disciples is from, you know, it's the same word, root word that we get our word discipline from to teach people so that people can be taught things. You know, a disciple is a student, okay? So it's impossible to have disciples, students, without actually teaching them something. John the Baptist had students. He had disciples. Let's continue. Verse 36. And he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Huh? Isn't that interesting? I mean, Jesus, in this day and age, they'd be saying, Jesus is stealing the sheep. Jesus is stealing somebody else's sheep. You know, Jesus is stealing John the Baptist's sheep here. Hey, John the Baptist didn't mind at all. And if you're a pastor and there are people who are leaving your church for some other church, bless them. Bless them, okay? They're moving on. They're, they're learning other things. God, you know, bless them. Pray that God shows them more than they know, more than you can show them, okay? Bless them. Let's read on. Verse 38. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, teacher, where are you staying? He said, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about the 10th hour. That would have been about 4 p.m. That would be the 10th hour from sunrise. One of the two who heard John and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Notice that there were family members in, you know, in amongst the disciples. There was like this one with this brother, this one with that brother. It's like, you know, and these brothers stuck together. Isn't that interesting? Verse 41, he first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted Christ. You know, Christ means Messiah. Messiah means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, or Shimon, the son of Yonah. You shall be called Kepha, which is being interpreted Peter. Peter, Kepha, is Aramaic. Peter is Greek or Petra, meaning rock. Okay? Verse 43. On the next day, he was determined to go out into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Now, We've got the two disciples of John the Baptist who Jesus did not call to follow him. He accepted them as disciples. And then we've got the ones who Jesus did actually go and call. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 44. Now Philip was from Bethsaida of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moshe in the law and the prophets wrote, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Yosef. Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. 
Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I told you I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. Oh, yes, he will. He said to him, Most certainly I tell you, I tell you all, hereafter you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now, a couple points here. Jesus used a prophetic personal word to more or less not, I guess you might say hook Nathaniel here. Now, Nathaniel was amazed that Jesus saw him in implying that there, there was no way that anybody could actually see him where he was. That's why he was so surprised. How did you see me under the fig tree? How did you know about that? It's impossible to know. He was surprised. That's why Jesus said, you know, you believe because of that, you will see greater things than this. So Jesus does, from time to time, use miracles and prophecy, personal prophecy, to woo people to himself. Another thing is here that Jesus mentioned that they will see the angels of God ascending, going up, and descending, going down, on the Son of Man. Now, what does this mean? So it's like, picture this. It's like the Son of Man is like a ladder going from heaven to, to earth or going from earth to heaven, okay? And the angels of God are going up and down on the Son of Man. The Son of Man being ben Adam, the son of Adam, the seed of Adam, which is, if you go back to the, the book of Genesis, you will see the seed of Adam is the first real explicit prophecy of the Messiah. So when, when Jews heard that term, son of man or ben Adam, they instantly knew what, what it meant. It meant Messiah. One more point here. You will also read in the book of Genesis that Jacob had a dream in his a lot of people know it as Jacob's Ladder, where he dreamt that there was a ladder and that the angels of God were ascending and descending upon the ladder. This was a vision of Jesus. This was a vision of the Son of Man. This is, this is what Yeshua, this is what Jesus was talking about here when he said to his disciples, and you know, you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. It was a direct reference to Jacob's ladder. Very important here. He was connecting himself all the way back to Jacob, basically saying, Jacob saw me. And this is another thing, okay? The gospel is not new to the New Testament. You know, uh, it says that the gospel was preached to Abraham. Listen, listen, my friends, there are only, there's only one God, one Lord, one baptism, one faith, one gospel. God doesn't have double standards here. He doesn't make mistakes and he doesn't change things. I am the Lord, I change not, he said. So Jesus was saying that Jacob saw him thousands of years before he was born. He was linking himself. He said, I am Jacob's ladder. I'm the one that Jacob saw. Very interesting question I have. Where was Jesus standing when he said this? Could it have been around the same place that Jacob had that dream? I wonder. Whatever the case is, I pray that God would give you great revelation and eyes to see, ears to hear, a mind to understand his word. And may you, you be blessed with revelation beyond that of all your peers. So as you go, call upon his name and he will show you great and mighty things. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen.